Hi, I'm Frances. The Knitting and Crochet Guilds collection in a 100 objects project aim to make the collection more accessible. We have shown you a 100 objects, but now we want to highlight a few special ones. The collection preserves many different crafting tools. It can provide a long history of the different techniques. Um, we have a huge collection of needles, hooks, stitch holders, needle gauges, row counters, boxes, way too many things to name. <laughs> There is a long history which can be explored. Seeing the tools which people used can help you understand traditional techniques or old ways of working. I'm going to show you a few sets of items from the project and we will see how they work. These wristlet crochet ball and knitting wool holders are from right at the beginning of the 100 objects project on day 10. By popular demand I'm going to show you how they work. There were many advertisements, such as these, for wrist holders until after the First World War, where they died down. It's a shame, because this ingenious idea would still be useful. Lots of us want to take our knitting or crochet with us, and these are a simple way of keeping the yarn close and off the floor. Um, these yarn holders are, a, are an extension of this idea. On day 85, we showed you this small selection of the yarn holders we have in the collection. They all work slightly differently, but they all hold the ball of yarn in one place. The recent equivalent is the yarn ball. This one's mine. <laughs> I also have a selection of knitting needle boxes to show you. These boxes were a popular item in the project and sparked conversations about how we all store our needles. Many commenters on the posts no longer use straight needles since lots of modern knitters use circulars or double pointed. Um, these are particularly nice boxes though, and you can occasionally still find them if you ask in charity shops. I'm just going to pass you on to past me to show you how these items work. Um, hi folks, and thank you Future Me. As you can see, I've prepared these yarn wrist holders for you to see how they work. Um, the history of these tells a story of a beach holiday resulting in sand and water getting into the ball of yarn. We've all been there and want to avoid it. <laughs> This sparked the lady's husband, um, George Garrett Kent, to design these tools to keep the ball close and not able to roll away. Um, there are a few different designs. This first one, um, where the ball rests on the circle and hangs like that off the wrist. Um, you don't want the ball to have the cardboard. You want to take the cardboard out um, so that this bar can fit through. The bar is attached to the wrist loop with this glass and um, so you have to undo that to fit a new ball on. <laughs> In contrast this one, this design, you do need the cardboard because you want the spike, it twists like that you see, you want the spike to be able to go through the cardboard and then you need to twist it into a T shape which then blocks it through the cardboard like so. This one has an elastic wrist, slightly different, and it has um, some ribbon inside. Um, these crochet ball holders, I think, have wonderful old cardboard packaging. Um, they even, if you open this up, they even come with the lovely instructions on how to use it. Um, with a bit of a blurb about how annoying it is when balls ro roll away, which I think we can all agree with. <laughs> there we go. Um, finally, this cross with a, was a further invention designed for knitting yarn. It winds around. Let me unwind a bit and I'll show you how it winds around. It winds around like the rayon yarn holders we posted on day 16. Uh, one way of the cross and then the other way of the cross. Like so. And then again it goes on your wrist with an elastic wristband and so your yarn doesn't roll away or get tangled. I mean it probably still gets tangled because it doesn't all yarn but anyway. <laughs> Um, these are great for crocheting or knitting on the go and it's always nice to take your craft out into the wild. I also wanted to show you these knitting needle boxes. 
They were all different sizes, so I had to gather a variety of different needles. Um, these big ones fit bigger needles, like so. But then we also have some smaller ones that won't fit though, that length of needle. But these small ones come from a time when it was popular to put knitting gauges on anything that didn't move. <laughs> um, and knitting gauges on boxes like these are very useful because you can measure right away what size your needles are. So this, this these needles are a size four in the old English, I presume. <laughs> uh, and they open. Like so, see my needles. Um, these boxes are very useful and here at the collection we try and find enough of them to store a portion of our um, of our needle collection. But we have so many needles that it's hard to find enough. <laughs> um, I will pass you back on to future me. See you later. I hope you enjoyed seeing the small selection of tools in our collection, but you can see more on the 100 Objects posts. If you'd like to see all the 100 Objects, check out the Collections page on our website, kcguild.org.uk. You can also find all the posts on our Instagram and Facebook pages, where everyone has been commenting with their own stories about the items. We hope you get involved. <laughs>